joining with us today. We are honored today. We have a very, very special guest, and her name is Annette Caps. And if you don't know who she is, you have got to stay tuned. Uh, Google her or dad. Uh, they have written books on all kinds of things that, uh, that you can reverse the curse. We have this book. We have one on angels. We have one on healing. We have all kinds of statements. Let me, let me give you a, uh, first of all, thank you for being here. Thank I'm going to give you a, a, a semi-proper introduction here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. She's an ordained minister, businesswoman, and licensed uh, pilot. Wow. Okay. I knew that was going to blow you away. Okay. She's a lifelong student of the Bible, and her curiosity led her to investigate the similarities of quantum physics, that's way over my head already, and the mm -hmm. teaching of Jesus Christ. This powerful combination opened, a new opened new dimensions for those seeking a bridge between the Bible and modern science. Wow. We could just go have a whole show all about that, right? Sure. You bet. <laughs> Um, building on her former teaching subjects such as the mind-body connection and changing the course of your life, she demonstrates a practical, practical application of spiritual principles in everyday life. Um, you, uh, you were on your father's program, Concepts of Faith. Uh, well, I already told you that's Charles Capps, uh, and uh, gener that's generated an extraordinary interest in as have radio interviews and magazine articles. Sorry, I lost my place. Uh, in addition to the book, Quantum Faith, Annette has authored four other books entitled Reverse the Curse in Your Body and Emotions, um, Overcoming Persecution, oh my, Angels and God's Creative Power for Finances. I mean, we all need all, all of that. All of that. We all do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you live in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and you're the president of Caps Ministries, which is, uh, has offices in Arkansas and Oklahoma. Right. And let's tell the website. Website is capsministries.com. All right. Okay, do you have any questions before we get started? Well, I'm sure I will as you go along, yes. so I'll let you get started. <laughs> well, I want to know about the pilot, the piloting first. Uh, how did you, my parents are pilots. I noticed that. Um, my dad uh, decided to take lessons and learn to fly when he was 17. And he was dating my mother, who was 18. <clears throat> Excuse me. They got married. And because he was only 17, she had to sign for him to get his license to fly. <laughs> so, wow. That's cute. Yeah. And I came along about two or three years later. And um, from the minute I was born, I was in an airplane. And at that time, my dad had small airplanes. I don't remember the exact names. I think one was a Luscombe, a Piper Cub. You've seen the little small airplanes that are two, three-seaters. And um, wow. so he would take me with him in the airplane to fly. And so from my, my earliest memory is flying around in an airplane. And I distinctly remember when I was three and a half, about three and a half years old, he sat me in his lap and he said, I'm going to teach you how to land this airplane. And so he said, now put your hands on the wheel and watch this little airplane because I was so small I couldn't see outside. <laughs> I couldn't see over the instrument panel. So I grabbed it and he said, now pull back, pull back, pull back. And so when I was a three and a half, I landed the airplane for oh, the first wow. time. Oh, wow. That's amazing. <laughs> and of course, my dad was really thrilled to tell that story. Sure. You know, so. Uh, oh, oh, my goodness. <clears throat> oh, anyway, when, uh, when we would go and uh, my sister came along, she's three years younger, we would go flying around the country with my dad who went everywhere. And. Um, when we get in the back seat, we did like I'm sure you did and everybody else does with their kids. Here's the line. <laughs> Don't cross that line. This is my side of the chair. Don't cross it. And, of course, invariably somebody would cross it, and my sister and I would start squabbling in the back. So my dad would rear back on the airplane, pull it straight up, and then push it straight over, which made us weightless. And we would float to the ceiling of the airplane. Oh, really? <laughs> wow. Now, here's the difference. This is where you become a pilot or you don't, okay? I flew to the ceiling and, w and went, wow, this is great. I want to do this again. And my sister was going, no, no, please don't. And so I'd say, do it again. Do it again, Daddy, do it again. So as soon as I got into my 20s, I started, took lessons and learned all the things that, you know, I'd been doing with my dad, but I had to be trained and licensed. So anyway, flying's been a very big part of my life, and I love it. Well, now, okay, you go up, wow. you float up, but then you just come down. Yeah, you drop it. Basically, the airplane goes down, and you don't. 
Yeah. <laughs> so you're but, come, but when you come back down to the seat, is the yeah, seat you didn't just bounce off the seat. <laughs> uh, so I mean, no seat belts. It wasn't a big deal. Well, no, we didn't have our seat belts fastened because we were in the back fighting. You can't <laughs> fight with your seat belts. <laughs> <laughs> it's right. So hard, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oh Isn't that amazing? That happened to us on, on the way to Israel uh, several years back. The plane just dropped, dropped. like a hundred feet, and yes. and of course you know you're flying up. And I I looked over at Rick, and that's not supposed to do that, is it? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that's quite a sensation for sure. It is a sensation. It really is. But anyway, I I I liked it. I enjoyed it. I like everything about flying. So um, I've had a lot of experiences flying with angels because I've needed angels <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> Some of the things wow. that have happened. So, yes, I've, uh, so I now, love being a pilot. Do you see angels? I have seen angels, yes. I th yes, okay, this okay. is wonderful. I, there's so many things that we <laughs> want to talk to her about, but for some reason I keep wanting to talk about the angels. Mm -hmm. So um, that's the confirmation, so let's talk about angels. <laughs> well, um, to hook into the flying part, I didn't actually see this angel, but I promise you an angel was involved. Um, not too long after I got my license, I went to visit a friend, and she lived on a farm. We've talked about farms right. here. And uh, had a long pasture that, you know, where they cut hay. Mm -hmm. And so the man that lived there, he used it as a, uh, a landing airstrip, strip, you know, yeah. occasionally. So she said, you can land there. It'll be fine. So I came in, and I flew over. I thought, well, you yeah, know, that, that looks fine. I can land there. So. And you were how old at that time? I was probably 25. Okay. So, old enough to know better. <laughs> <laughs> so I came in over the trees, and just when I came in over the trees, I caught a little bit of a tailwind. Ooh, and so no. my airplane, instead of setting down, it pushed it. And when I sat, it set down, it was going faster than I anticipated, and I was headed right for the tree line. Big trees, mm -hmm. close together. and. I couldn't stop. I had my feet on the brakes. I couldn't stop. And I said, thank you, Lord. The angels are with me now. And that plane just came to a screeching halt. And I had about three inches from the wing of the airplane to the first oh, tree. My, the nose oh, went right between yeah, the trees. Wow. 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 And so I know that that was an angel that stopped because I was not stopping. And then suddenly I stopped. It's amazing that, that you thanked God and the angels for stopping you rather than praying that he did. Mm -hmm. Well, I did that in faith. Exactly. Yes, you that's, know, that's but the you learned that. Part. Yeah. I, did, I learned that from my dad. You, yes. know, you don't start praying, oh my gosh, I'm going to die, help yeah. God. You know, that's the uh -huh. wrong prayer. Uh -huh. You, right. you want to pray the end result. The end result is the angels are with me. They're going to stop me before I hit that tree. That is that's wonderful. Because takeoff and landings are the most dangerous of any kind of flight. You know, of course, dropping and, and turbulence is, is bad, but there's so many things that could go wrong. Well, that's true. You know, there's a saying about flying is that flying is hours and hours of sheer, just total boredom, interrupted only by moments of sheer terror. <laughs> <laughs> and that was my moment of sheer terror was that landing experience. Oh, but wow. uh, yes, um, we've uh, thank God, thank God for the angels ooh, and for ooh. his protection. And, uh, you know, I've prayed Psalm 91 every day after I learned, you know, the power in Psalm 91. And, uh, you know, it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, whose power <coughs> who can withstand? And um, even trees. That's right. Yes. But when I be began to study that, that first scripture, it said, He that dwelleth in the secret place, that actually is a word for, in the Hebrew, for tent. And it actually it says, He that dwelleth is actually stakes a claim. So what it's saying in the Hebrew is, He that stakes a claim in the tent of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty whose power no foe can withstand. And it goes on and it says, a thousand will swallow at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it will not come near you. Mm -hmm. And so you see in the desert, uh, there, particularly in the Middle East, you know, you set up a tent because of the severity of the sun and you're under that tent, you're shaded, you're protected. 
the, bat the battle's raging outside the tent. The battle is happening, but you yourself are in the presence <coughs> of the Lord. You yourself are in the tent. Mm -hmm. Staked your claim there. So that's, that's the way I, I, I read those scriptures. I declare those scriptures, and I picture myself being there. And I believe that's where the safety is, is in the presence of the Lord. Yes. Wow. That's, that's beautiful. right. So, uh, okay, you, I was looking at one of your books. Um, there's angels. We have guardian angels. You say that they don't leave us. Well, they we, better uh, not. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the, the scripture no, about, <laughs> tell, tell us the, the scripture well, that talks it's, about. Well, it says that the children, <laughs> that their <laughs> angels are before the face of the Father. Amen. And, um, you know, why would we think that when we grew up we'd lose our angel? because we're in definite need of guardian angels to protect us mm -hmm. and do other things, not just protect us, but the angels work on our behalf. It says they are messengers. They're messengers sent from God. Mm -hmm. And it also says that they hearken to the voice of God's word. And somehow we try to make that all religious, you know, God's word, you know, God's up there. He says a word and his angels go perform it. Well, that, that's true also. But, you know, he's given his, uh, us his word in the form of the Bible. One of them is Psalm 91. So when you declare the word of the Lord, you're giving voice to God's word, and his angels go forth and see to it that that word is performed when you declare it. I believe that. Wow. And you said uh, wow. that they minister to people? That... Yes. They are How ministering spirits. They are ministering spirits sent to minister for us who are heirs of yes. salvation. I guess my first experience with an angel, I was maybe six or seven years old, and I had gone, gotten in bed, gotten tucked in bed at night, and I really, to be honest with you, I didn't know anything about angels at that point. I mean, I went to Sunday school, but um, my knowledge was very limited, and I laid down. And I was all tucked in, and Mom and Dad always sort of shut the door to my bedroom where there was a crack about six inches, just enough that I guess if I called out, they could hear me. So I saw a light coming into my room from the hall, and I was lying there, and I closed my eyes, and all of a sudden I felt something warm beside my leg sit on the side of the bed up next to me. And it was so warm and comforting and... It just felt so good, and I, it, I felt love. I felt peace. And so I opened my eyes because it, I thought it was my mom, maybe my dad, came in the room, and I didn't know it. But when I looked, the door was still six inches, and I could see the silhouette of someone there. And I just, I just went to sleep. Mm -hmm. And the next morning, I, I, I kept thinking about that. And so I said, Mom, did you come in my room last night and sit on the bed? She said, no. Why do you ask? And my dad, later I saw him, I said, Dad, did you come in my room last night and sit on my bed? And he said, no, I was watching the news. Wow. Wow. Did you tell them? No. Wow. No, I kept that very quiet for years. It, it was very sacred right. to me. Mm -hmm. It was a... Wow very holy thing to me. I knew that it was a visitation. You were how old? Well, maybe six or seven. Mm. So I didn't tell it for a long time. But I'll, I, even talking about it now, I can still feel the presence. Wow. The wow. presence of the Lord when that angel sat on my bed. Wow. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Okay, well, we need to take a quick break. and then. But I want to know when you've, uh, you've seen him other times? Yes. Uh, and we're going to hear how she's seen them other times. I want to see good angels. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Good angels. Oh, okay, we'll be back. Okay, we're back, and we're going to get to hear more about how you've seen angels. I just, have you seen angels? Rick has. Yeah. You know, we, I we, know. Were, we were laying in bed one night, and I had just asked him a question about grace. And I turned over, and then all of a sudden I heard his heart pounding. And I, I turned around and I said, what's the matter? And he, he was raised up in the bed and he said, did you see that? And I said, see what? And it was a lady in a wedding dress 
and she came in front of him and stood at the end of uh, at the end of his feet and she had a veil over her face but she was looking at him and then then that's when I said or then that's when um, I said what's the matter and so when he turned back she, uh, she was gone and so then he got on his knees and I got right down beside him I was like you ain't leaving me up with that bed so then the Lord spoke a word to him and said all things have been made ready bid them come like a bride ready for her husband it was you know showing him and, and God was taking him to another uh, dimension in ministry, in ministry. Yeah. but anyway I didn't see it but I you know, you he were did. There I was he there <laughs> when it happened. <laughs> right. Okay. Sarah's got a great one too. We'll maybe one day talk about it. <laughs> no, I. You know what I think would be great is so. Explain to the viewer what what does an angel look like, or how, you know, how does it look when you see an angel? How can they, you know, know when they've seen an angel? Well, I think with because we're visual people. We, we put a lot on the visual appearance. Everybody, if you've seen Jesus, everybody wants to know what did he look like. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, have you seen an angel? What did the angel look like? Well, they can take different forms right. for one thing. So I try to steer away from what they look like and go more what the presence is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and what it feels like. Because, That's good. you know, the Bible tells us that, you know, even Satan can be transformed into an angel of light. Right. He can take a different appearance. So you go more on what your perception is and the feeling is. If whatever sat on my bed as a child made me frightened, it was not an angel right. of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Right. But because I felt the presence of God, I felt the attributes of God, peace, love, then I knew it was an angel. Yeah. So they can take different forms. I've seen and this is a story all into, its, into itself, but um, I sort of want to hook into what you said. Uh, I've seen angels that look like men, mm -hmm. regular men. Sure. They look just like, you know, humans. Uh, then I have seen in the spirit and seen uh, an angel uh, many years ago when I first, I was really in, in the, really getting to my ministry was starting to, um, reach that different plane and I had a, a situation that arose that almost destroyed my life in ministry and I was still just out there just plugging along um, I was frightened I was uh, upset uh, but I just went and did what I knew to do which was continue to minister the word in spite of the circumstances and uh, there was a person that was attempting to call where I went and destroy my ministry and it was just a very difficult situation. I was young, I didn't really know how to handle it and so I just fell on the mercy of God, you know, God help. So I was in, um, down in Texas and I was speaking at a meeting and um, they had, interesting, thing. I think it was a ladies meeting maybe, they had a long table and they had a podium set up and I was speaking and uh, ministering and I came sort of maybe halfway through my message and I stepped back and when I just took a step back from the podium I was frozen in the presence of God I felt a presence that was so strong that I couldn't even move and I turned and looked and there was an angel standing to my right mm. he was I'm short so it's hard for me to gauge how tall he was but I'm saying <laughs> probably seven feet tall and he had a very stern look on his face. And he pointed at me and he said, this is the third time I have come to you and you would not hear me. And I, I immediately, I just turned, I don't know what anybody thought there. I turned and said, I, I'm listening. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm listening now. And the minute I said that, I just fell to the floor because the, the power of God was so strong. And he said, I'm going to tell you three things. And he told me, he said, number one, he said, I'm t taking care of this situation. Mm. Mm. You are not to touch it. Mm. You don't touch it in your thought life. You don't say anything to anybody. You don't defend yourself. You don't do anything. I am taking care of it. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Angels carry a powerful presence. Now, this guy, um, he must have, I don't know, he didn't, you know, 
give me specifics. I'm just guessing now, but he carried a very sense of authority and power. And then he went on to tell me three other things that were going to happen, I think. I don't remember. It's been many years. But he told me things that were going to take place. I don't know what happened to the people there. I just disappeared because there was a table. And I just was gone, you know. And when I got up, I, the power of God was so strong, someone else just took over the service. And I, uh, I was in a sense of awe. Mm -hmm. And I kept my mouth shut just like the angel told me. And the person that was attacking my ministry suddenly, I don't remember if it was a call or a letter or whatever, and said, I'm, 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 I will never bother you again. I will never do anything again. Oh. Whoa. Wow. And that's it. it. Just gone. The angel, I don't know what he did. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but he did wow. something. Yes. And everything that he told me came to pass. Now, see, that's one of the ways you can know whether it's really an angel of God. Mm -hmm. If an angel comes and tells you something and it doesn't agree with the word, right. Right. if it doesn't come to pass, if it doesn't even sound like God, then it's not an angel of God. Well, had you sensed his uh, trying to reach you prior to this, it was almost, sounds like a reprimand. I don't want to be, he says, I've tried to get to you three times. Had you sensed the other times? Yes, thank you for asking that. I sort of left that out. Um, I was sitting one morning doing my makeup and I felt someone walk up behind me. I was alone. And I felt a presence walk up behind me and I thought, Wow, you know, the stress is getting to me. <laughs> That's sort of how we think about things. And I just sort of ignored it, you know, and it did. It, it happened, the same similar thing happened then. And he said, this is the third time. So twice that happened where I felt a presence and I didn't stop and go, Lord, what do you mm. have to say to me? That's what I should have done. Mm -hmm. Lord, what do you have to say to me? I just sort of put it back, explained it away. But I guess he probably could have intervened a lot earlier if I had paid attention. Mm. But thank God, you know, thank God that he did. Mm. You know, I was in a place under the anointing of God, you're more likely to pay attention to what God's doing because you're ministering, you know, so you're more tuned in. And so when I stepped back and I felt that presence again, that I turned and I saw him. I love what, wow. what you talked about, how that, I mean, when he said, don't touch it, you know, taking care of it. And oftentimes it's just in us if we're being attacked, yes. you know, to, to try to defend ourselves. Yes. And when God yes. is saying, you, I'm your vindicator. Yes. You know, I will take care of this. But when we try to, you know, put our hand in it and get involved with it, when he's saying, you know, look, your enemies will be ashamed suddenly. You know, and that's really what happened. And when we just let go of it, this is yours, God. That's really good. It's really, it's really true. You know, even though we're Christians and we pray and we believe God to take care of things for us, even though we hand it to him, mm -hmm. then we'll walk off and they'll turn around and take it back. <laughs> that's right. uh -huh. Well, maybe I can fix it. Yes. Right. Maybe I can work this out. You're not working it fast enough. Yeah. You yeah. know, that's me, you know. Well, I always... I've done that. Yeah, I always say I feel like like Sarah she was trying to fix something. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, God said we're supposed to have a son, so maybe I need to make it happen. Yes. You know, yeah. so, I mean, we're, it's kind of with good intention or um, Rebecca with Isaac and Jacob. Yes. Well, God said the younger's going to serve the older, and now he's going to get the blessing. So I... But, Women want to fix things, right? Exactly, especially <laughs> us as women. <laughs> we, we, we think that maybe there's something we can do. And um, wow, you know, God can do things beyond our wildest imagination. We'll just keep our hands out of it. Leave it alone. <coughs> Let God handle it. And if God tells you to do something, then do it. Mm hmm but it doesn't make sense sometimes not to do something. I know, it just doesn't make sense. You know, if I just did this or did that, and... So I don't think I'm, like, I'm going back to what you said. I don't think I'd handle the reprimand very well. I mean... <laughs> I think I would have. I mean, hey, an angel reprimand, yes, sir. <laughs> sir, yes, sir. <laughs> Whatever you say. <laughs> Whatever you I'd be say. like, why can't he be nice to me? <laughs> I, no. was, I was so thrilled and grateful. I could have gone on ignoring what God was 
trying to say mm. to me. And yet, he stopped me. He stopped me and told me what the answer was and redeemed the situation and took care of it totally. So even though it was a reprimand, <laughs> what it really did is it made me realize how all-powerful God is mm -hmm. and how all-powerful His angels are. Mm -hmm. You know, the greater one is in us, greater is He that is in me than He that is in the world. The angels of God are greater than any situation we're facing. They can take care of it. That's right. Thank you. What it's do you think, uh, have you ever, you know, you're trying to get an answer from God or you feel like, this is just me, I don't know, but there's got to be other crazy people like me, if you guys don't relate to this. But you, you're you asking for an answer and you feel like he's trying to give it to you, but your mind is so scrambled. You have so many thoughts. Have you been through that? Or oh, yes. What, so what do you do in that kind of situation? That's the time when you, you've just got to, to back off because you really will mess it up when you're in that state. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm the voice of experience. I've really messed it up in that state. Um, but I was talking to a staff member the other day and said, well, I'm going to do this, do that. I said, wait a minute. I need to back off from this. I just need to back off from it. And I need to get in the presence of God. I need to read the Word. You know, the, the life of God is in His Word. So let's get rid of the confusion. Just read the Word because God's not confused. Mm -hmm. Read His Word and let things become still. And then, just leave it with God to, you know, God can lead you ways besides sending an angel to intervene. I mean, that was, this was an extreme circumstances. <laughs> you know, God can just give you one little word. God can, you can see something on television that That's just, right. somebody's watching this right now. And they're wondering what, what to do. And they just heard that word. And that's God speaking to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's God speaking to them. So it can happen in many ways if we just get out of that state of confusion and learn how to get out of that. And what, and think about his love. I'm sorry. Yeah, we're out of time. <laughs> I know, that's right. Fast, fast. It went very fast. Well, she'll be back. And thank you for watching. And you got to check out her books, Annette Cat. <coughs> and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Thank you.